In today's video, I want to talk about pagination and I want to introduce you to cursor pagination, which is the fastest way to do paging for specific use cases. I'm going to explain what those use cases are and why you need to consider cursor pagination. Let's start off from the get products query handler and let's introduce paging to this query. I'm going to update the query class to include the page and page size arguments that we're going to be sending from our API. So let's add a property for the page and let's add another property for the page size. Let's go back to our get products query handler and see how we can implement paging. We're going to make some changes to the handle method to update this link query to support pagination. Let's first examine what we have in place. We are querying the product entity. And in this case, I'm using Martin as my ORM. In general, any ORM should support a similar style of writing queries like what we have here. So we're querying the product entity, and then we are projecting our entity into a product response, which is our response object, and we are loading all of them into a list. So I see that the database with 100,000 products, and we most certainly don't want to load 100,000 products at a time, so we decided to introduce paging. We updated our query object, and what are the next steps that we need to take? The first thing that we need to do when we are doing any type of pagination is to add a sort order. The simplest way to add sorting would be to sort by the ID of the product. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say order by, and I'm going to tell it to order by the product ID. Because the ID is also the primary key of the product table, it's going to be sorted in ascending order in the database by design. This is also called a clustered index, and we are using this to our advantage. Now that we have our sort order in place, we need to decide what page of data we want to load. So we first need to skip however many pages we've already loaded and load the next page. So we're going to call the skip method, and we need to specify how many records in the database we want to skip. Typically, you would get this value from your API, and this is going to be your page first. This tells you which page you are currently loading. So, for example, if we are loading page one, we don't want to skip any records. So we're going to say request page minus one to account that we're starting paging from one. And we're going to multiply that by the request page size, which is probably going to be a uniform number, something like 10, 20, whatever we can decide this in our API. So we've skipped the records that we don't want to load. And now we just call take, and this is going to tell the database to take this many records, and we just specify page size. So what's going on here? We're skipping the previous pages that we don't want to load, and we load the page that we do want to return from our API, and then we return this to our consumer. The skip take pattern is something that you will typically see when you're implementing pagination. And this is your standard approach to implement paging. You usually want to return the total number of records in the database so that your user interface can know whether to display a button to go to the next page or not. But we're not going to do that here. We just want to focus on the pagination aspect and mainly the performance of our pagination. So let's start our API and see what kind of performance we have from this solution. If I send this request to our API, we're going to get back 50 products. Let's examine how long it takes for us to get a response. In this case, it's 100 milliseconds, which is relatively fast. Let's send the request to our API a few more times and see what we get back. So we can see that it's relatively consistent around 100 milliseconds. Now let's try to do something else. Instead of loading the first page, let's try to load the last page in the database. Because our page size is 50 in this case, and I know I have 100,000 records in the database, the last page is going to be 2,000. So I'm going to change the page query parameter to 2,000 and send the same request to our API again. And now let's observe what response time we are going to get. So I'm sending a request, and you can see the request time has already doubled to 200 milliseconds. Let's send the request a few more times just to see if this is not a hiccup from our API. So we get a little bit faster response time, but it's still nowhere close to the 100 milliseconds when we were loading the first page from the database. 
So why is this happening? Why are we getting a fast response for the first page and a not so fast response for the last page in the database? I thought pagination was supposed to only return a fixed number of records from the database and the performance will be unaffected. Depending on the database provider that you're using, it's going to be slightly different. It typically uses the offset operator to tell the database how many records to skip and then something like a fetch next or limit operator in Postgres to tell it how many records to fetch and return from the database. The SQL engine has to somehow offset all of the records that you want to skip and only fetch or return the desired records from the database. You can see how this becomes very inefficient the larger your data set becomes, but is there an alternate solution that we could consider that could provide better performance? This is where cursor pagination comes in. I'm going to show you how you can implement cursor pagination, and then I'm going to discuss why it's actually faster for some specific use cases, and also what those use cases are. But before that, if you're enjoying this video, I'm going to need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. So what is cursor pagination? Let's take our get products query and slightly update it to support cursor pagination. Instead of the page and page size parameters, we're going to need something different to support cursor pagination. So I'm going to create another query object right here. I'm going to create another record and I'm going to call it get products cursor query and let's add the only argument that we need which is our cursor. So I'm going to explain in just a moment what this is and it's going to return the same response as our original query which is a list of product responses. So we're actually going to send this query now from our API endpoint and I'm going to create a separate implementation of that in a different class. So let's rename this to get products cursor query handler and also here and let's update the query that we are handling and also here. All right, so now I have everything in place and I'm just going to slightly modify the implementation and we're going to see how this works. We need to update the handle method to support cursor pagination. Let's get rid of this part here where we were previously doing skip and take and I'm going to explain you what we want to do. The cursor is going to represent a pointer to the last record that we fetched from the database. Then we're going to use that pointer to fetch the next page of records from the database. And then when we get the page of records from the database, we're going to take the last record in the page and take the cursor from that record. The cursor is typically going to be some unique value like the ID but it can also be some other column. So let's see how we would implement this. I'm going to use the ID of the product as the cursor. What we need to do is we need to fetch the products from the cursor and onwards. So we're going to say where the product ID is greater than or equal to the cursor, which is coming from our get products cursor query. We identified where in the database we want to fetch our records from. And now that we know where our cursor is pointing, we just take the next page of records. So we're going to say take, and let's take the request page size, not the cursor, page size. All right, this approach is slightly different, but let me show you what the performance is when we are loading the first and the last page from the database. So let's send the request to our API where the cursor is zero, which is the default value for an integer. And we're going to get anything that has a bigger primary key than zero and let's fetch a page size of 50. So if I send the request, we're going to get back the response in 50 milliseconds. So let's send it a few more times to see how it performs. You can see that it's considerably faster than the skip take approach that we had earlier, but there are a few issues. If I want to load the next page of data, I have to find what is the last record that I fetched from the database, which is 50 in this case, and I need to return anything with a value of more than 50. But because the query we wrote is greater than or equal to 50, it's going to also return that record. So let's leave it at 50. And we're going to update the implementation in just a moment to take this into account. And we're also going to make one more change. But I want to show you how this performs when I move the cursor or the pointer further and further away from the start of the records, which has a primary key of 1. So if I send the request this time, you can see it's 30 milliseconds. 
let's move it to 5000 for example and send the request again again you can see that we get 30 milliseconds as the response let's move it to 50000 and see what we get this time again it's really fast we get the response back in 12 milliseconds and let's try one more thing i'm going to move it to 99,950. So this is the last possible page from the 100,000 records that I have in the database. And let's send the request to our API one more time. And as you can see, we get the response back in 10 milliseconds. So performance wise, cursor pagination is unparalleled because we are using the power of how our database actually works to our advantage. Because we're using the ID as a cursor, and the fact that the ID has an index, which is the primary key, and it's also sorted in ascending order by the ID, we are always going to be able to seek into the value that is our cursor, which means that we can always immediately hit that record. And from that point on, take the page size, which is 50, and return that from our database. There is no offsetting at the database level and then taking a page and returning that, we are immediately seeking into that page and returning it directly. So I hope you can understand why this is so much faster than the skip take approach. I mentioned what the issue was when we are returning the value that is greater than or equal to our cursor. So how can we solve this problem? So if we fetch the first 10 records and we use the last value as the cursor, then we're going to return that value again, duplicating our response. So what we need to do is here, when we are fetching values from the database, we need to return one extra record. Then we need to make sure that from the query handler, we only return the request page size number of products to satisfy our API request. But what do we do with the extra record that we return from the database? This is going to become our cursor. So basically what you do is you define a variable to hold the new cursor and it's going to be the products the last product and you take the ID or whatever value is the cursor. We can also use the C-sharp index feature to fetch the last element and that's going to look something like this. And to implement cursor pagination completely, you would also have to return the cursor along with your products. So I created a simple cursor response class and here's what it looks like. It holds the cursor and the data which is a generic argument. And now we're going to use that in our query to return the cursor response from our API. So I made the necessary changes. We are returning a cursor response of a list of products. And let's then move this into its own variable, which is going to be the product responses. And we just need to return a new cursor response and set the proper values. So I'm going to create a new cursor response, which is going to return a list of product response and we need to initialize it with a cursor and our product responses. So this satisfies our query handler. And let's see what response we get back from our API in this situation. So let's send the request to our API with the cursor set to zero this time. You can see we get back a response which contains our cursor, which is the next element that we want to fetch, and our data, which contains the 50 products that we wanted to read from the database. And now what you do is you take the cursor that you get back the response and you use that to fetch the next page of data. So the cursor is going to keep moving by 50. It's 101, it's 151. What I didn't do here is take into account when the amount of data that we get back from our database is less than the page size you specified here, which means you either don't have the desired amount of data or you have reached the last page in your database. In this case, you need to somehow notify your client that there are no more records, or you can just let them send another request with the new cursor, and they just won't get back any response, and then they can conclude that there is no more data. You can handle this any way you think is appropriate, and now I want to discuss where cursor pagination is useful. You typically want to use cursor pagination where you have some sort of infinite scroll feature in your applications. A good example are social media applications like Twitter or LinkedIn, where you keep scrolling down the user interface and keep seeing new posts. This is somewhere where cursor pagination is useful when you want to scroll down the user interface 
and only fetch a given page of records at a time. And when the user reaches a given percentage of the page down, you load another page using cursor pagination, which is going to be very performant. I hope that you enjoyed this video where we compared skip take pagination to cursor pagination. Let me know in the comments which one of them you think is more useful. And until next time, stay awesome.